Living simply in a busy world can feel like a breath of fresh air if you're bogged down by all the things surrounding you. I've been on a journey to live more intentionally and simply for almost a decade now, and I can definitely say that minimalism has allowed me to focus my energy on meaningful hobbies and ventures, but also reminds me to stay grounded when things get overwhelming or busy. If you're interested in applying minimalist principles to your everyday life, this video will go through four steps to help you on your journey if you are just starting, answering questions that many from this community have shared. It'll focus more on the aspects of decluttering and curbing your consumption, which many know minimalism to be. But you can find more info on my blog on the page called Simplify, which goes into further topics and deep dives into minimalism. So to kick off this video, my first step isn't to start decluttering all your belongings, but to know your why. Time and time again, I receive questions about where to begin. Instead of jumping straight into action, I believe it's essential to go deep down and ask yourself why you want to start a minimalist lifestyle. What is your end goal? And what you hope to achieve? Any life change, whether it's a career switch or a new year in school, usually needs some sort of mental preparation to make the season more meaningful. Likewise, take some intentional time to figure out your why, as a clear sense of purpose will carry you through the ups and downs when you aren't sure of what you're doing. Second, it's time to start tackling the root causes of consumption. If you jump into decluttering without tackling the root cause, it'll be very difficult to keep up. Consumption is inevitable, considering the world that we live in. But we can learn to refuse from the start to avoid excess consumption moving forward. There are a few ways we accumulate things, such as shopping or gifts. So for shopping, for example, take a moment to pause before you click that purchase button, especially with non-essential items. I personally take 30 days to hold off on a product to determine if I truly need it. If I still want to make that purchase after a month, I'll then take the time to research and make sure that I'm buying a quality product that will last the test of time. I share more about this particular habit in a previous video, which I'll link here in the video and also in the blog post in the description box. As for gifts, it can be tricky to tell loved ones that you'd rather not receive the things they get you, as it can be a way they demonstrate their love and care for you. With that in mind, I always recommend leading by action sharing minimalist or eco-friendly gifts with them, whether they are experiences or consumable items such as locally made foods and body products. These gifts may be opportunity areas to share more about your minimalist values, and hopefully they'll catch on. If they don't after a few times, you may need to sit them down at a certain point and explain your point of view but remember to do so respectfully and patiently. It just takes time for some people to understand. Third, let's dive into some more details about how to minimize, declutter, and organize. We all know that a pile of clutter and old items throughout the home can be super overwhelming to start with, but start small. Consider focusing on one room or closet at a time, taking one to two hours to sift through items. If you want to try to tackle as much as you can in a short amount of time, choose items that you don't have a deep sentimental connection with to declutter first, so that you can quickly do a sweep through. This could be a bathroom or a kitchen declutter, as there may be some very obvious items that need to be tossed or recycled. From a sustainability perspective, 
I'd also recommend taking time to properly determine if items can be sold, gifted, donated, recycled, then tossed. Taking that extra effort to properly sort out your decluttered items will give you a better sense of what to look for when you're buying new items, whether it be recyclability, repairability, etc. It's all about becoming more conscious about our purchases and where they'll end up. And I definitely know that living a more environmentally conscious lifestyle goes hand in hand with minimalism. For those tougher items, such as clothing you think you might wear, sentimental family heirlooms, or well-intentioned gifts that you'll never use, you'll need to be more honest with yourself. What are the pros and cons of decluttering this item versus keeping it? Will I use this item in the next one to two years? Will I be able to rent an alternative or will I completely regret this decision? Obviously, all these questions answered are going to be much easier said than done, but I find that putting my maybe items into a box for some time at the side of my house allows me to revisit it the next time I declutter with a clearer mind. Sometimes our emotions can get the best of us, so it's okay to take a step back and revisit later. Last, let's talk about how to stay on the minimalist path. There are going to be a variety of hurdles in your minimalism journey, which is why it's important to start this lifestyle change with a clear vision and a why statement, as mentioned at the beginning of this video. Observing your shopping tendencies, taking time to reflect on what you're thankful for, and slowing down to realize all that you have are essential. If you have the opportunity, you can also consider finding like-minded minimalist groups online or in person that you can connect with. It's always nice to have a sounding board and community if you run into challenges along the way and are feeling a little bit alone. I also received quite a few questions about how you know whether or not you've achieved the ultimate state of minimalism. And to be honest, I don't think there is a concrete end goal for any of us. Consumption to some degree is inevitable, so it's a constant journey as we're ever-changing individuals with changing hobbies and interests that make us accumulate things or realize that we don't need them anymore. So be gentle with the process. Do what is in your means and don't feel intimidated to achieve a certain level of minimalism that is portrayed here, online, or any other media. We can all apply minimalist principles with a grain of salt in our lives, but we'll all do so in our own unique way. So those are my four principles to start a minimalist lifestyle. But I wanted to share that I am considering doing a new video series to deep dive into your specific minimalism questions. I'd love to continue the conversation and be able to talk a bit more about specific examples from your own journey. I'd love to know if this is of interest in the comments below. And stay tuned because if you are interested, I will be collecting those questions on Instagram and the YouTube community page, so be sure to follow and subscribe to submit your questions. With that, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and thanks as always for watching. Hope you guys have a wonderful start of your week, and I hope to be back with another video soon.